Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock, and I am going to be coloring things today, but not with markers or with paints. I'm going to be coloring instead with embroidery floss and making a beautiful background for my card. This is not as hard as it looks, I promise you that. And I'm going to show you how to calculate the math and cheat the math if you need to. And here's my thread. I don't have fancy thread storage or anything. I just threw it all in a Ziploc because I'm not a seamstress. I don't sew very much. So when Ellen came out with these dies that were meant for sewing, at first I was intimidated, but I was also excited. This particular one, I counted out 16 holes on one side and 20 holes on the other. And that means I can go in groups of four. So I can do four reds, four blues, four reds, four blues. When I started out this one side, I had to pick a place to begin crisscrossing the card. I made sure that I did it in multiples of four left behind so that I could do four reds, four blues, four reds, four blues. That's the only thing you really need to consider so that you end up with a relatively even number of reds and blues. Since both 16 and 20 are divided by four easily, this whole thing should work out mathematically. It's just a matter of deciding where to start. So how do you know where to start? Well, in my particular case, I decided on just starting kind of right there at the opposite side and not really going up the side of the card at all. This one's just a test and you'll see how this plays out versus how a different starting point will play out. So I switch to the blue thread and I'm gonna do four of those and I'm leaving the red thread there and attached so that I can just pick it back up and then I don't have to keep changing. So you ne do need to have enough needles for however many colors you're gonna have if you're gonna do it this way. Now, I also wanna put a caveat be behind any of this. If I don't use any sewing terms correctly, I, I want you to be forgiving because I don't sew. There might be all kinds of names for techniques and things. I haven't researched. I've just made this up on my own as I was playing with the threads and the dies. But let's get back to the project now. You can see that this is going to be circling the corner pretty tightly. So I'm gonna get this nice triangle of crisscrossed threads, but it's just gonna be that triangle in the corner. If you have a large image or a large sentiment, then you might want to have a really big open area in the middle of the card. And in that case, you want to start a little bit lower down the way I did here, because that's going to keep the threads closer to the edge of all of these holes and closer to the border. If you wanna make it more dense and have more of the card covered with the background, you'll need to change that up. But what you can do with these, which is great, is you can practice. So here I'm just testing out to see if I start in this particular spot, where will that land me? So I just undid it. There were no knots in anything, so I just untied it all. So I went back to square one, and I decided instead to move my multiples up a little bit onto the side of the card. So I counted out four reds, four blues, four reds, four blues, so I'd have an even number left behind in the, the white area, and then started in with the, the red thread first, doing four of those, I'll do four of the blues. And really the only thing you have to do is count four of each one. You don't have to keep calculating. Have I, you know, have I counted out the number up and down the side? If this is all divisible by four, 16 and 20 are both divisible by four, this should work out in the long run. If it does not, or if you miss a thread at some point and you accidentally counted three or you did five instead, feel free to cheat. Nobody's gonna look at this and count it and get upset with you over that by any means. But you can also undo a few threads if you need to, to go back and fix something. Very, very easy to do. And I love the fact that these dies have nice big holes in them because it makes it super easy to thread everything. I have a video over on my channel today where I was using these dies with some embroidery fabric, which is not as forgiving. So I did a little more planning on that. So if you're interested in more on how to design your own pattern, you might wanna check that out. And I'll have a link for you in the doobly-doo when you're all finished, that you can go watch that one. So here I'm going around, you can see I'm working on the second corner and I'm covering more of the real estate 
in the center of the card. My corners are going to be bigger, fatter, wider, and the sides are the only part that's going to get small. And that's all some sort of math calculation in the universe. I don't know what it is. There's probably something like, I don't know, remember the word parabolas from my youth? I don't really know if that's what this is. I have no idea and I don't really care because I'm making something pretty and that's all that matters. <laughs> so there might be some, uh, some more science to this that you might discover if you fall down the rabbit hole and start doing a lot more of these string art backgrounds. But as I'm working my way around, look how cool this looks as the two colors cross over each other. Now, if you wanted to do a third color on something like this, you want to pick a die that has a number divisible by three or find some way to make that math work out so that you're going to be able to change from one color to another without having to do a lot of cheating. Now, some of them I noticed when I was counting them out, some of them are, have like 29 holes in them or 51 holes. And so it doesn't always work out evenly with, at the size that you want it. And if it doesn't, just cheat a little. Just add an extra line somewhere in one part or leave one out in another part. It's not really going to matter all that much. Look how cool that is. I mean, that would be gorgeous just on a card by itself, throw a sentiment in it. Well, I don't do anything that's just good enough. I have to take it to the next level. So I got out the frame dies and cut a frame out of a piece of cardstock that I'll add on. And I also pulled out one of the hexagons because this is going to be perfect to cover that center spot. And I put some dimensional adhesive onto the back side of the frame so that I could attach that onto the front and have it popped up a little bit and it'll cover those holes. And then the new sentiment set that has all of these beautiful sentiments about stitching, I thought would be perfect for this. And then I had stamped it not quite centered on the hexagon. There's me and my not being able to set center things. But I had all these little scraps, these little tiny bits and pieces of threads left. So I just lined them all up and, and just kind of put a piece of tape on the end. Uh, to attach them to the back of my hexagon. And also I hadn't mentioned earlier that instead of knotting all of these threads, I just use scotch tape on the back so that I don't even have to learn how to knot something properly because I'm sure there's all kinds of proper ways. But since I don't sew, then I don't have to know all that stuff. So I lined up the threads here on the outside in approximately the place that I wanted to have them on the front of the card, taped it on both ends, and then just used my fingers to spread the colors out a little bit, and took another excess piece of thread to tie a bow and adjust it to make a really teeny tiny one. And then it was ready to add to my card. So there's all kinds of really cool things you can do with these dies and the threads and try to find different ways to make patterns out of them. And hopefully I will come up with some more as well because they're a lot of fun. Look at that. Look at how perfect that hexagon is. Isn't that wonderful? Well, this is a little sneak peek at the one on my other channel. If you want to go see that, it's going to be an embroidery hoop. Yes, me, embroidery hoop, believe it or not. So that is it for me today. I hope you will try this yourself sometime. Supplies are listed in the doobly-doo as well as the link to the other video. See you later.